Hello. Uh, good morning. Namaste. And Merry Christmas. What we're going to be learning about today is section 4-4, and it's entitled, whatever I forgot to say, Triangle Congruence, Side, 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 or if you are, if you will, or SAS, which is short for Sassafras, which I have no idea what it means, but my grandmother says it a lot. Okay? So, we're learning SSS and SAS. Okay? Which are triangle congruence theorems. Which essentially means two things you can use to prove that triangles are the exact same size. Yeah, essentially the exact same triangle, just like copies of each other. Alright? First term you need to know. It's called triangle rigidity. If something's rigid, it's stuck, it's froze. Alright? It's It doesn't move. It's like in Harry Potter, whenever they do... Uh, Tropicus totalis, and it makes them rigid like a board, okay? And no, that doesn't make me dorky for knowing that. It makes you dorky for believing me and understanding it. And understanding it. All right? So, triangle rigidity, that's when the triangle is set, okay? It doesn't move. It's staying the way it's staying. Okay, that doesn't mean that it, you know, all triangles are going to be set three lines together. But what it means is if there are three sizes, like if your side lengths of a triangle are three four and five. There is only one shape in the entire world that that triangle can look like. It cannot ever be in a different look. Like if it's going to look like that, no matter how you try to adjust it, that's how those three side lengths are going to fit together, no matter what. Okay? If you have three set side lengths, okay? Like you know, 7, 18, and 12. That doesn't work. Say we got three six and eight okay three six and eight doesn't matter how you make that if we all had like three sticks one was three one was six and one was eight if we all went over there we went our little corner and, like, and we like made our little triangles and we put them up and we taped them together they would all be the exact same shape if none of us screwed up like none of us like broke off and into the stick or whatever Alright, so that's called triangle rigidity. It means no matter what, if you have the three side lengths, there's only one way that triangle is going to look. And they're all going to look the same, but that particular triangle with those side lengths is going to look a certain way no matter what. Okay? I said that, and there's a lot of words for just one definition, but you know, you love it. You love triangles. They're your favorite. Okay? Now, the first theorem we're going to use to prove that triangles are congruent is called SSS or side, side, side. Okay? That means that in our two triangles, like there and right there, we'll call this one A, B, C, and this one D, E, F. Which if you didn't notice, <laughs> that's like the first six or seven letters of the alphabet. Right? All right, so what it's saying is, let's say this is four, four, three, three, six, six. Okay? It's saying that if we know that three sides in one triangle are congruent to three sides in another triangle, then guess what? Those triangles are congruent. They're the exact same, okay? Let's see. Boom. AC. That's one set that's, this is the way I like to do it. Circle one of them, box in the other, and star the last one. If I'd have told you, I'm a star. All right? Now, that's three sides we know match up on two different triangles, which means those suckers are congruent, okay? Now, let's do one that's a little bit more complicated. Alright, let's do an example that you might actually have to see. Alright? Okay, we got two triangles that are like French kissing right here, okay? Alright, we want to prove these two triangles are congruent using SSS, which is side to side. Actually, we can use it doing anything, but in this case, guess what? The only one I've taught you is SSS, is the only one you're probably going to have to use to figure it out. Now, we know PR is congruent to PT because we got one little dash there. So, we know PR is congruent to PT. Alright, we know RS is congruent to TS. So, RS is congruent to TS. 
Okay? Now, we need the third side. Now, they didn't mark any more sides and say they're congruent. We're going to have to use one of our little properties that we learned back in like chapter 2. Or earlier this chapter. I can't remember. I'm getting old. Okay? The only third side left is this one. Okay? I don't know if I've told you this in the video. I'm pretty sure I have on the previous sections. When you're proving triangles are congruent, there are two, two main things. If you only have like two bits of information, there's two main things that will give you that last bit of information. And this, I'd say 19 times out of 20, these, one of these two ways is the reason you'll get that third like angle or side that you need. Okay? One of them is called the vertical angles theorem. That's whenever, like say, two tri like, say there was a line right here and a line right here, and these two triangles look like, you know, a necktie or something. We know that the angles on this side and this side are congruent because they're vertical angles. It's called the vertical angle theorem, okay? We're not using that here because this doesn't look like a necktie, does it? No, it doesn't, okay? <clears throat> this one, the other one, that's vertical angle theorem. We use that a lot. other one you use is the reflexive property. I don't know if you remember this from Chapter 2. It means, like, A is congruent to A. Something is congruent to itself. Guess what this middle line is congruent to? Itself. Because see that middle, that bottom, like the bottom line there and the top line there, is it not going to be congruent to itself? Um, question, answer, yes, it is. Okay? So PS is congruent to PS. And you're done. And then when you write your triangle congruence statement, just make sure you match up the angles that match up with the other ones. Does that make sense? They have to match up. Like, I'll pick this top triangle. P. R S. Triangle PRS is congruent to what matches up with P on this triangle? P does. Not always it's gonna be like that, but it is this time. Uh, let's see, if R is on this side, that's T, and S matches up with S. And that's your triangle congruence theorem. Alright? Next thing you need to learn. It's called an included angle. Okay? You know when you go to the movies? And your mom's like, you make sure you take your little brother. Uh, and she's like, make sure you include him. And that's how your mother talks to I met her. Okay? Included angle is the angle that is included between two sides. Right there. Two sides, that's the included angle. Okay? You include your little brother. He has to sit between you and your friend so he doesn't wander off and you know, eat popcorn and hit on your girlfriend or whatever you use the reason, okay? So, included angle is between the two sides. That's included in there. Included angle. That was easy. Alright, now we did side, side, side a second ago. Now, we're going to do side, angle, side, alright? Now, if you're thinking, well, Mr. Carver, you just taught me shy, 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 and then I just saw a thing where you talked about included angle, guess what? Yeah, that has a reason, dork. Okay? Now, that's an angle, a side, and an angle. So over here we got an, an angle, a side, and an angle. I'm saying all these things wrong. Side, an angle, and a side, a side, angle, side. These sides match up. Angle that is included, and then side. Okay? The end. Okay? That's, that's about as difficult as it is. Side, 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 angle, side, included angle, that's all we've learned today. If you know a side, an angle, then a side is congruent to another side, angle, side, on another triangle, those two triangles are congruent. You write that triangle congruence theorem that I just drew for the last one. And what? One, two, three, you know me, the end.